What's going on, y'all? So let's. Oh, y'all. Let me tell you something. If I look a little crazy, let me tell you something. The end of the episode got me. The end of the episode, it really did get me. It touched me a little bit. So mm, I apologize, but I'm also tired. But anyway, so this is Black Ink Crew content. Okay, and it is season one, episode three, opening up. So basically what's been going on, it really wasn't much to this. First of all, we're still getting to know these people and getting to the nitty gritty. So they're not really giving us that much drama. That's why the um, reviews don't be that long because they're not giving us that much anyway. But, um, you know, dealing with Lemire. Okay, we just got to, I'm just going to go person by person right now. Okay, Voodoo Doll, <sighs> girl, did not say. We don't need to hear no more about you being in the cult, okay? We don't need to hear no more. We heard it. We heard it. We heard it. If you're not going to put it all out there, what happened, anything, please stop bringing it up. This is episode three, and yet we're still on this because, you know, she goes with ink dripping um, to one of her spots where she likes to, it's like a little s &M type of, you know, burlesque type of spot that she likes to unwind. And, you know, she tells him the reason why she left the beach or whatever because of the way Tim was talking and how she feels about men talking down about women and all of that. And, um, and, you know, all that happened or whatever. And so, you know, he was trying to make it seem as if it really wasn't meant to be that way. But, you know, he was understanding exactly where she was coming from because he said he grew up with a single mother. And he saw how the husband at the time was abusive to her. And so, you know, and he also has sisters. So he knows what it feels like and how he would never let a man talk down to his um, sister or his mother like that. So he gets it. But he was trying to say that, you know, Tim probably wasn't really trying to go there and be what you thought you probably was just having flashbacks she just went on ahead and said that she went was in the cult and all this stuff and you know went through some things and then took him in the back room listen we're gonna hear about this cult shit next week too okay at this point i'm tired of it i am tired of it we get it put it out there let this be the last time that you say something about it next week because we are over it okay moving on from that you know kp don't know what's going on with her um, you know, he don't really feel like he, it, it don't even seem like if it ain't about that bill, uh, getting a restaurant, the restaurant, if it's not about getting a, um, tattoo shop open, he really ain't really concerned about nobody else feelings. It's understandable because he's on a time crunch, but still you gotta, you know, prioritize, but that's what he's doing. And so, um, Barbie, she gets, uh, some flowers. She gets some flowers. First of all, they said to Erica, everybody was like, who the hell is Erica? Erica. <laughs> I'm going to say it every time I hear somebody name, Erica. You know, um, they get some flowers or whatever, and it's a nice little note. And we think it like she got a little secret admirer. When, they, when you read the note, it sounds like a little secret admirer until it gets to the bottom where it says, love mom. And so she was like, uh-uh, fuck this bitch. How'd she get this um, information where I'm at? And she threw the flowers and all that stuff and stormed out. So, you know, she going door to door, car to car with Nessie to um, put flyers up there for the grand opening of... Uh, art, what is it called? I Am Compton. It's called Ink, Art, and Music, you know? And so, uh, they go sit down and they have a little conversation and they basically, she was just saying how her mother was never really there for her, uh, when she was nine months old. She, her grandparents got legal guardianship over her and, you know, her mom basically came in and out of her life and if she did, she was very negative, calling her out her name. You know, I don't, you know, there was drugs and everything and she was like, it was like, she was jealous of her own child. And my thing is, I don't care what the circumstances is. I would never respect somebody who calls their child out their name. And some people are very comfortable and think that it's okay that they mama call them a bitch and stuff like that. No, that's not normal. Okay. That's not normal. You shouldn't be okay with your mama calling you out your name just because. Okay. Or period. Even when y'all get in an argument, you shouldn't be having to do that. That's the, the level of respect is gone if you do that. I would never, ever, I may think that. I may think that. We all guilty of thinking it. This bitch. But I would never, ever 
let it slip up my mouth and call her that, okay? Because that, that shit hurt me. That shit will hurt me. And it's probably just seeing her face like, oh, so that's what you think? You know, after and then everything that, you know, she done, done for me throughout my whole life, that flashback to me like, and it just make me feel like shit. So, you know, that's just me. That's just me. I'm a sensitive person when it comes to things like that, okay? But, you know, she had to deal with that and, um... <clears throat> she don't, oh, when the producer asked her, do you want to reconnect with your mom? She said no, real quick. I said, oh, it was really bad. It was really bad. And I don't blame her uh, for feeling the way that she feels. But at the same time, she do needs to go to like some therapy or whatever to get that out because you don't need, you, you, she's still um, holding on to that real tight. And you can tell because it's affecting her. I would never let somebody affect me that way. You know, we got to talk this stuff out because it, it, it's, it's, it's going to hurt you more than it's hurting that person. Okay, holding that stuff in and keeping on to it. Sometimes we got to forgive and move on, okay? And sometimes it's hard to forgive. I understand because I'm one of those people that it's hard to forgive people. You know what I'm saying? Once you hurt me, once you wrong me, that's it. You know, I can forget your ass just like that. And then something that could trigger and it'll pop up and it'll be like, oh, okay. So, yeah. But uh, moving on from there, what else is going on in this episode? KP was trying to get the uh, permits to get the construction done or whatever. And come to find out, they couldn't get the stuff done. He got uh red, uh, couldn't get past the red tape. They basically had to stop constru construction. Uh, Lemire, he gets in his feelings, but Lemire was saying some true shit. You can't do it all. He even put out a suggestion. You know, I got a person to do this and to do that. Oh, but he don't do this. He don't do tattoo shop. How do you know what all he do? Okay, he could be. Uh, specialize in a lot of stuff, okay? He could do food trucks. He could do buildings. He could do this. You just didn't even take out the time to take the suggestions and everything like that. You know, if we all supposed to be working together, why don't you just listen to what people say? You can't do it all. And, and, and that's what I understand the frustration with Lemire. And given the fact of what he was going through. But um, KP gave the stuff to um barbie she had a person that she know up in city hall to go down there and to figure out you know how to get some permits through and of course she came through and so they was able to start up construction again and get the shop going and eventually they do get the shop open for the most part it do look nice in there uh the studio is an art thing and then it's the uh you know um tattooing and everything it's called ink art and music it's for people to come in get their ink get their art you know teaching the kids how to draw and all that stuff and then do music or whatever we also saw kp um tattoo yellow breezy give him a um tattoo and talking about that we saw some tattoos get done okay moving on from that um voodoo doll do pop up okay she said maybe she did overreact or whatever after talking to ink dripping but you know she cool was i the only one who thought when them flowers came to barbie that that was probably from voodoo doll until it said her mama because you know voodoo doll got a thing for barbie we just don't know which way barbie going this way that way or both we just don't know okay but uh we'll see how that's what i'm trying i'm i, I want to see what's gonna happen with that one okay now the drama is gonna pick up next week the drama picks up next week when this new tattoo artist come in. And I guess Barbie, you know, I think she... Girl, you like the receptionist or whatever. Are you or the manager? Whichever one you are, um, I don't think, you know, if he... If, if KP want to hire this person, let him hire the person, okay? You not a tattoo artist. At this point, he need all the people that he can get, okay? But, you know, she got dead in her feelings. And it seemed like, you know, they gonna butt heads. And that's when the drama gonna start on the fourth episode. But... We see some tension, and I'm like, is this manufactured? But um, between Lamar, Lemire and um, KP, because Lemire, he just feels as though, you know, he got a whole bunch of stuff that was going on him. You know, um, he starts the episode off uh, with him doing his picnic for Danielle. Let me just tell you this. Danielle is irritating. I'm just sorry. That that girl, she is not likable at all to me. She is irritating as hell. She already put a uh, funny taste in my mouth. And I'm, I'm just sorry. Like, like you keep on putting it out there. Well, you the reason why, you know, he the reason why I feel this way. So now he got to deal with it. But you stay with him. You stay with him. You don't have to deal with it. And he don't have to deal with it. You chose to stay with him. Yeah, he hurt you. But you ain't get over it. And you ain't 100% forgave him if you keep on doing all the stuff that you're doing. Okay? You trying to make him pay by doing what? 
that doing what? Being insecure as fuck? Like, no, girl, move the fuck on if you're going to keep on doing this. That's tiring. That's tiring. And then your, ch- your child going to see this and going to grow up with some um freaking complexes and stuff. Like, no, that's just, uh, uh-uh, I'm just not here for that. Okay, what you need to do is go down there and apologize to Nessie because you the one that came in her role. All right, that girl ain't finna do nothing to you. You know, she ain't even thinking about that nigga that way. She probably had your man a long time ago and said, been there, done that, don't want it again. Okay, you the only one that's sweating him, you know. But it is what it is. Moving on, you know, they go to the doctor to get the little checkup. Um, in the blood test, they found out that the baby might have an abnormal spine growth going down in his lower spine. Um, and it's called spina bifida. And, and um, you know, it could affect the way that the baby walk. Uh, could be a lifelong um, deformity that's going to happen. And they're not sure if they that the baby truly has it, but it's just some signs or some traits of it or whatever showed up in the blood work, you know? And so they're going to send them to a specialist and, you know, see if it's really there, okay? And then if they do find out that the baby has an abnormal spine, it's up to them to make the hard decision whether or not they want to keep the baby, keep, um, yeah, keep the baby or terminate the pregnancy. I don't want to ever be put in that position or I, I, ugh, I know there have been some people who've been in that position before where something is going terribly wrong where they have to decide whether or not to keep a child that they had growing inside them or a child that they've been wanting, an embryo that they've been wanting for a whole time and then kind of find out it's not viable or, you know, this this is going to happen to it and, you know, it's not going to come out normal or, you know, it's going to have some issues and uh, I just would not want to have to put be in that situation and feel that pain because, oh, uh, that's a lot of stress. And you all automatically, just like Danielle was doing, what did we do wrong? What did I do wrong? Why is this happening? You have all these questions. So I apply each and everybody, each, every person who, woman and man who stuck around and, you know, um, took care of a child with special needs. Okay. Cause that takes a lot. That takes a lot. You are very, very strong. Um, I am so tired of this damn video. I've been trying to upload this video for over an hour. And this is the second time I'm uploading it. And the shit just not processing. It's been processing at 0% for this whole time. I'm about to just say fuck it. But anyway, I'm sorry. But you know, you know, later on they going to the specialist and they talking about names. She was like, if it's a girl, call her Summer Miracle or Summer Angel. If it's a boy, we're gonna call him Kevin because that's his brother name who passed away from a motorcycle accident. And am I the only one that was confused when he said they got there we go. Oh there we go. Finally. It's 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 working, y'all. Now. Anyway, um he was just saying how um at first, they called him and said he got his leg messed up. And then they came back out and said, I guess the injuries were more intense, intensive than they thought. And they shrinked than they thought. And he passed away. And it's very unfortunate. And um, he was just saying how his mother hasn't been the same ever since. And when he broke that, that was not funny at all. That was some real shit right there. When he broke down, baby, I was in here like... That's why my face was a little red and a little puppy. Because, girl, I'll be real with y'all. Like, Ashley be up in here feeling shit sometimes. Sometimes, you know, it's that time of the month, too. You know, so, you know, emotions just running wild and stuff like that. That really touched me. That really touched me because it made me think of my uncle. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, it is hard to get over a loss, especially somebody so close like that and somebody so young, you know, and it's somebody that you looked up to. I was just, like, really feeling it. So, that was a very, very personal moment that they didn't have to share and I'm glad that they did because a lot of people have gone through that you know but other than that that was basically the episode you guys tell me how y'all felt about it and we'll see what's gonna pop up next week all right and I'll see y'all later peace